But when we alter our brain waves, we're able to access different information. We're able to clear away the noise. We're able to gain clarity. We're able to see things from a different perspective. We're able to drop the ego. We're able to do different things than we can do when we're in beta in that operative state of waking where our conscious is kind of leading the, the charge. And so that very much is the process. And that solution could come in the content of your dreams. It could also come once you wake up. Or it can also come in what I call the middle world, the state in between theta and beta. Hey everyone, it's Amy Lynn Durham, and you're listening to Create Magic at Work. Create Magic at Work is on a mission to equip senior leaders with tools they need to be a true quantum leader and actually understand what that means. Improve employee engagement, retain top talent, and transform your workplace culture to have less drama and stress. So let's start making magic. Hi, everyone. Welcome to Create Magic at Work. Today is going to be fun for everyone in the workplace listening. I have Megan Mary as a guest, and she is a dream worker that specializes in the analysis of women's dreams to promote transformative personal growth and enlightenment. She's the founder of Women's Dream Analysis and the Women's Dream Enlightenment podcast. She's an intuitive introvert, mystic, and writer. After being introduced with three chronic illnesses, she experienced a spiritual awakening. She now works with women all over the world, offering dream interpretation, transformative journeys, and enlightened guidance. She lives in Idaho with her rock star drummer husband and two cats. And if you are tuning in and we we said, women, this is only for women, (laughs) don't hang up if you're a man or if you're... You know, if you identify as neither man or woman, stay tuned because we're going to cover some enlightening ways that you can tap into your dreams to enhance your professional and personal life. So Megan, welcome to Create Magic at Work. Thank you, Amy. It's a pleasure to be here. Yeah, thank you for being here. So this is new for business and the Create Magic at Work audience. However, this is Create Magic at Work, and we always bring cutting edge insight and spiritual insights to the workplace from a faith neutral perspective. Can you start off explaining to everyone that might be super new to this what a dream analyst does and how that's connected to maybe tapping into your higher self? Yes, absolutely. Great question. So dream analysis in general is, to me, understanding the content of our dreams. And that can be dream interpretation. It can be a lot of different approaches, right? Historically, there's been so many over thousands and thousands of years. But the way I approach it and the way I view it is that dreams are a product of our subconscious, and our subconscious, I believe, has our the knowledge of our higher self and of the universal self. And the dream world, I feel, does not have comply with the time and space constraints of the three-dimensional world that we exist in when we are awake. So the dream world allows us to access so much more information than is available to us in our waking life. And the benefits to that are manyfold. Okay. So can you tell us a couple of the benefits to yes. trying to tap into our dreams and, and interpret them? Yes. So when we start to unravel our subconscious, when we start to draw the subconscious into the conscious, we start to create a more holistic understanding of ourselves. So 5% of our brain is conscious and 95% of our brain is subconscious. So everything that we perceive in this reality, all of our reactions, judgments, perceptions, thoughts, fears, everything is 
really coming from our subconscious. It's a compilation of everything that we've experienced and learned. And if you believe in past lives have possibly brought with us before possibly this existence, it's a combination of everything of our unique existence. Mm -hmm. And contained therein is a wealth of information. So if we are able to access that information and we're able to decode it in, in our own dream language, which is specific to each person, then we're able to start tapping into and understanding, okay, what are my challenges? What are my gifts? What are my fears? What are my blocks? Um, what's a, another way that I can approach this solution, this situation? What's a solution, alternative solution? Where am I not being in alignment with my higher self? Where am I not listening to my intuition and my inner voice? What is my higher self telling me is a better path for this situation? And so that can be self-confidence, personal growth, self-discovery, all the big all the big existential questions, why am I here? What is my purpose? Um, what do I have to offer to the world? And also, how do I maneuver this situation? How do I make my life more fulfilling? How do I create the reality that I want? So all of those things are possible by accessing that treasure trove, I like to call it, of wisdom that is contained in the stories of our dreams. Mm. What would you say to a leader that is maybe problem solving or wanting a solution to a project they're working on? How could they tap into dream work to help? have a solution arise from that. Yes. So getting solutions to problems or creative approaches is one of the great applications of the dream dream work. So mm -hmm. you can ask yourself that question, think about that problem, immerse yourself in that situation prior to going to sleep and your brain is going to start working on it. Your spiritual self is going to start working on that and it's going to present solutions in a coded way. So you might go to sleep thinking about a challenge or a situation or a project or you need a new creative idea before you go to bed and you might have a dream that you think, well, that has nothing to do with that. I don't know what to do with this. It, do it doesn't seem to address what I went to sleep thinking about. Mm -hmm. But that's because people oftentimes look at the dreams very literally, and they don't look at them as metaphors. So when you okay. start to look at the story of your dream as a metaphor, you start to realize that there are solutions laid therein in the parable, as it were, that it's telling. And many times there is a solution lying in that story that relates directly to the challenge that you're facing. So I would say that it, it very much in a sense can be dream incubation or dream manifestation where you're actually yeah. laying an intention. And we know the power of intention and power of affirmation. So when you have a, a question that you want to pose to yourself, that you want to sleep on it, which is where that comes from, then you're, you're giving the opportunity to receive the direction and you're giving your mind the opportunity to mine everything that you know to come mm -hmm. up with a solution to that problem. Hmm. I'm reminded of a passage in Dr. Judy Neal's Edgewalker book. As everyone that listens knows, I'm an Edgewalker coach and facilitator as part of the tools and philosophies with the Create Magic at Work brand. And one of the stories she tells is and I can't even remember what part of the book is, but it's coming up for me right now, where these high level C-suite leaders would go to bed and they would say to their brain, 
I'm, I'm not going to stress about this any longer. I'm totally paraphrasing this story, by the way. And I just want to tell my brain to give me the answer when I wake up in the morning. So you just talk to, you tell your brain, I don't know what to do with this. When I wake up in the morning, give me the answer. And I let this go. And they would often wake up in the morning with some sort of answer that they could move forward with. Yes. How does that relate to, to what you're saying? Completely. I mean, that's a great demonstration. That's a great example. Because when you dream, you enter a different brainwave state. And it's very much the same brainwave state as when you meditate, theta. But when we alter our brainwaves, we're able to access different information. We're able to clear away the noise. We're able to gain clarity. We're able to see things from a different perspective. We're able to drop the ego. We're able to do different things than we can do when we're in beta in that operative state of waking where our conscious is kind of leading the the charge. And so that very much is the process. And that solution could come in the content of your dreams. It could also come once you wake up, or it can also come in what I call the middle world, the state in between theta and beta, where you're, you're in that liminal space, you're waking up, your brain's still working on it. You're starting to become a little bit aware, but you're still getting a flood of ideas. And there's so many famous inventors and artists, and the list goes on, that have used dreams to actually tap into that, that those creative moments. And from from the sewing machine to the benzene molecule to Albert Einstein's theory of relativity, they were all in, all came from dreams. Mm -hmm. I have so many questions for you. So get ready. Okay. <laughs> this is all ties into work and progress and success here. What is your interpretation or your feedback on someone that's having nightmares or they're under a great amount of stress at work. Maybe they're working in a toxic workplace, or maybe they're working on a project where there is a lot at stake and they find themselves having sleep that's not restful and possible nightmares or night terrors. What would yes. your feedback be for someone in that space that might be listening? Mm -hmm. Yes. So nightmares as well as recurring dreams tend to occur when we're not paying attention to the guidance of our subconscious. And when we're asleep, our logical brain is turned off, but our emotional brain is turned on and is activated and performs in the exact same way it does when we're waking. So that's why we experience dreams are emotionally at an emotional level as if they're really happening, because to our brain, they really do. And the emotions are one of the key pieces in, in the method that I use of determining the meaning of the dream. And when you have nightmares, what happens? They're highly emotionally charged. So what we want to do is figure out, okay, what is this really peak emotional message here that is being delivered in the dream? What's, what's the scenario and what is the challenge what is what fears are being brought up and what how is the dreamer acting in the dream and all of those things can lead to a greater understanding of some subconscious fears of some subconscious concerns that perhaps we might not be aware of and when we can start to peel them back and just look at them without the ego, we can start to see, okay, this is what is blocking me. This is what is making me feel pressured in this way, or this is what is preventing my progress, or this is what needs to be removed in order for me to find a solution to this. And there are a number of things that you can do uh, to sort of transmute that experience. So one of them is 
to reimagine that scenario in your waking life in a visualization, which is much like meditation, but where you visualize that scenario of that dream, but then you envision an alternate ending. Now, in that state, you have to sort of come up with that alternate ending for yourself, but you may already be able to say, oh, I wish it ended this way, or why didn't I do this, or I wish I could have done that. That can Hmm. give the suggestion then back to your subconscious of how that can play out differently. But the other scenario is to utilize the technique of lucid dreaming, which does take some practice, but when you can attain the state of lucidity in a nightmare or in a dream, then you are able to actively change the outcome right then and there in that dream. And that completely transmutes that situation then, because as soon as you confront that on that in that metaphorical liminal space, then it changes. It starts to change because you're recognizing it. And when you start to recognize it, then you can start to integrate it and start to work on it in a way that gives you that that holistic, really wellness. Yeah. I've often woke up with an unfinished dream and then I, I pull myself back into that stage to sleep lucid dream type because I, I lately I'm like, no, no, no. I want to finish this. I want to finish this, you know, even if it's unfinished. And really what you're talking about is this magical way to do it from a different consciousness level, from a different conscious level um, than waking. And in coach, I mean, in, in coaching, we, we reframe perspectives and stories we tell ourselves all the time. And this is a new way to do it and to tap into that where maybe we're reprogramming some energy that needs to be reprogrammed or shifted from a different consciousness level. Right. Absolutely. Um, Yes. Yeah. Thank you for, thank you for sharing that. What would you say to someone listening that is like, I don't even dream. I don't. Yes. I, I haven't, I don't feel like I dream at all. Yes. And I, when I started this work, I was surprised how many people said that because being a high dream recaller and have me having, you know, three to five dreams and remembering them all every night, I was really surprised to find out that some people don't. Everyone does, unless you've had a injury to the head and there's some, some other thing going on. Everybody does. We have about three to five dreams a night. You just don't remember them, A, because you have subconsciously turned that off somewhere along the way because of what that information presented that you didn't want to deal with. So you didn't even realize that you were doing that. But at some point you said, no, I don't want to hear that. And you shut down the recallability or you just haven't paid attention. So the power of suggestion, wherein you are just getting up, you're immediately on with your day, you're right into beta, and you have better things to do. Also, you know, our culture does not encourage dream appreciation. It's not part of Western culture. We're taught to be embarrassed or think they're silly or just, you know, at, at best disregard them because they're just mumbo jumbo and we're sleeping and that's really all we're doing and just forget about it. And, you know, we spend so much of our life doing this that I spent most of my life wondering, why are we doing that? Doesn't anybody, is anybody curious? There's got to be a better, there really has to be a reason. So really just taking the time to appreciate that everybody has this inside themselves and become curious is enough often sometimes to start that process of awakening where you start to Accept that you have some intuition, accept that you want to listen to it, accept that you have some guidance there for you, and start to tap in. That can be enough to open the door. Hmm. Yeah, very good. Very good. I was thinking as you were sharing, one of the the vision, one of the main vision of Create Magic at Work that we talk about a lot is 
how are we showing up as our authentic selves in any space? How can we risk take as an edge walker, which the biggest risk we take is to be our authentic self in any space and show up who we are. And as you mentioned, Western culture shutting down that piece of brushing off dreams when really, if we look at it from a time perspective, our, we spend time dreaming and that's a part of who we are. And perhaps opening up space to explore that is tapping into being our full selves, our full selves here as humans and, and the human experience, yes. which could open up a world of possibilities for us at work and at home if we explore that a little bit more. Yes, absolutely. What would you do? Yeah. Do you have anything else to say to that, Megan? I I feel that there really is so much opportunity. There is so much space to bring that in. There is such a call for that now in this time that we need to start integrating our whole selves, that we're so split and we're so not sure how to do that because our, our society and our culture doesn't create space for it. But how mm-hmm. can we be how can we be our authentic selves if we're not paying attention to that, if we're discarding that? Yeah. I'm gonna sh- I'm gonna shift to another curious question I have. What is the relationship of alcohol intake, which is kind of woven through corporate culture at times? you know, we're on the road, we're traveling, we have expense budgets, we're going to dinners, we're networking. What is the role that alcohol plays in how it affects or impacts our dream life when we go to bed? Hmm. Well, I think any kind of substance, so I'm just going to kind of make a broad sweep there because that could be prescription medications, anything that's going to alter your perceptions can of course influence your your physiology so it it can and your emotion so it could very well impact your dreams as women also our hormones highly impact our dreams so in terms of whether we have high dream recall or not can depend on the balance of our hormones so it's all a very delicate balance so all of those things can and of course when we're talking about tapping into our dreams we're talking about tapping into our intuition And our intuition can be dulled when we start using other substances because we're not, we're, we're kind of band-aiding it, right? Because that tunes us out in most cases um, versus tuning us in. And it's a way to kind of escape within ourselves. And we don't really then, we're not really able to listen as well. So, mm-hmm. I mean, it's a situation where I'm not saying never do it, but I'm just saying it might not be beneficial as part of a mindful practice when you're actually trying to tap in for solutions because it's going to confuse things. It's going to dull your ability to actually get that clear listening. Mm-hmm. When I studied the sleep stages in college, which I won't tell you how many years ago that was. <laughs> I I recall that there were four. I don't know if the information has changed. And I also recall that stage three was rapid eye movement, which is considered the dream state. Is that accurate? And yes. um, okay, you're nodding your head. Yes. Okay, good. And I also recall that stage four was the deep, deep sleep that is beyond the rapid eye movement the stage three dream state. I also recall that the more stage three rapid eye movement REM sleep we get, the better rested we feel. If somebody is so exhausted that they are crashing every night from maybe their life and their work, what are some ways that they can tap into the REM stage three a little bit more? Well, 
this is, I'm not exactly a sleep expert, but one of the methods that I know that is used in lucid dreaming, which isn't, isn't really pro sleep, but is called the wake back to bed method where you actually um, wake up either on purpose or because something else wakes you up in the middle of the night and then you go back to bed and that actually in the early morning hours can actually help you induce lucid dreaming because lucid mm. dreaming often happens the later in the night. So the more vivid dreams happen at, towards the end of the cycle and towards the beginning of like kind of like early morning hours. That's also from a spiritual perspective where a lot of a lot of information can come through. And so you know, if that were a possibility, that's that's one technique. You know, in terms of uh, lucidity, it also I've heard people say, "Oh, you know, I'm so great at lucid dreaming that I wake up exhausted because I'm so active, actively um, taking part in this in this lucidity." So I mm -hmm. think it's a it's a it's a delicate balance. It's trying to make sure that you get enough sleep that you can get into that REM state, but. Of course, dreams can take place outside of REM too. They're just not necessarily mm. those deep, vivid, profound ones. They might be a little bit more, I don't want to say mundane, and it certainly doesn't mean that they don't have meaning as well. But sometimes mm. those really profound ones that stay with you forever are later in, in the night. So, yeah. What is one way we've talked about a lot, a lot today. Um, and I hope we gave some insights to everyone on how they can tap into their dreams and maybe start exploring, you know, these are just like micro steps, start exploring them to the hyper achiever in me wants to say, you know, to maximize uh, fulfillment in, in our waking life and in our professional lives. So in that spirit, what is one thing out of everything we talked about you would recommend somebody maybe try as a micro step into this space yes yes well the number one tip that i always give everybody and i haven't come up with a better term for it but i call it thinking backwards so when you first wake up in the morning before you reach for your phone before you get up and start thinking about everything that you have to do Take a moment and just be still with your eyes still closed and think backwards about where you just were, who you were just talking to, what you were just concentrating on, what you were just doing, where you just were. And it's not going to come immediately. You really have to concentrate, but almost search in your mind. And it's like when you walk into a room and you say, what did I come in here for? And you've totally lost what you were thinking and you have to stop and you have to be still and you have to think backwards. I was just thinking this. I was just thinking this. Oh, that's right. I was going to do this. It's much like that, except you're accessing that dream state and you're using that in between middle world to think back where you just were. And when you start to get that little hit, that one thing, Oh, I remember I was, I was at the house I grew up in or whatever. Then you concentrate on that. And it'll start revealing itself little piece by little piece, and it'll go backwards. So it's not going to be linear necessarily, but just making that mindful practice every day when you first wake up gives you that opportunity to start accessing that world. And the more you do it, the more you're going to start being able to remember. Mm. Yeah. Yeah. Thank you for sharing that. What in all of this that we've talked about, I want to hear from you what you think a quantum leader is. From I the think, dream analyst. <laughs> yeah. So much of dream work is acknowledging that there are so many levels to our existence right? And it's acknowledging that we are all energetic beings. And 
to me, quantum leadership is applying the theory of the theories of quantum physics to leadership. So it's saying that we all are connected and that we all have a universal knowledge as well as individual knowledges. And instead of taking the top down approach to that, the hierarchical traditional approach, that we need to look at how we can collaboratively use our, our, ener- our energetic existences. And so how we can tap into our intuition and our subconscious, and then how that can be integrated into our waking lives to improve not only our lives, but everyone else's, our relationships, our careers, all of that should be informed by that energy so that we're constantly aligning ourselves with our highest good. And when we do that, we're, we're actually making it, the existence better for everyone else. Amazing. What an amazing, fun, and fresh way for some people to try to do that, to do work for the greater good, to live their life for the greater good, and to just play a little bit with, with exploring your dreams. This was such a fun conversation today. I'm going to pull a card for you from my journal prompt card deck. It's a deck of uh, 33 cards that I designed for work and career. And you can actually purchase a deck at createmagicatwork.net under the shop. And we're going to get a message for you and for everyone today that tuned in and listened and is listening. (laughs) So we got creativity. I'll show you the... And there's a painting of a ship in the ocean and a dolphin and uh, in the illustration. Oh my gosh. I was sitting here at the end of this interview, like, I wonder what card's going to come up because there's always a magic card that comes up. I shuffle, I close my eyes. And I was like, I wonder what the universe is going to give us for this message today. And listen to what the affirmation is. I make time to daydream and let ideas take shape into my reality. Like I just, I, yeah, the magic, you cannot deny it. I make time to daydream and let ideas take shape into my reality. Yes. So there's two coaching questions on here for everyone listening that you can journal about. But actually, like, I feel called to ask you, Megan, what is a way that we can use daydreaming and letting our ideas taking shape into reality what are ways we can do that that helps empower others that's kind of a tweak on the question that's on the mm-hmm. card mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. I think when we align ourselves with our higher purpose then we realize why we're here and we're here because we're all connected And when we try to separate ourselves, that's when we get out of alignment. And so empowering others is really only possible by stepping into your own alignment first. And by aligning with your own intuition, that's how you can get that guidance to find out what that is, how you start down that path. And so I feel like the solution really is for for everyone to tap into themselves and and in doing so when they when everyone really can tap in with their true higher self and start to follow that path and uh, embody that purpose then we really are empowering ourselves and thereby it has this ripple effect Mm-hmm. where everyone else then becomes empowered also, which is really why I stepped into the dream work realm is because I wanted to empower everyone with what I felt was not really acknowledged. Thank you. Great advice for everyone listening. Megan, if people want to connect with you and reach out to you and explore the work with that you do, maybe interpret a dream or something like that, how can they connect with you? Yes, you can find me at womensdreamanalysis.com. I also have my podcast, Women's Dream Enlightenment, 
and that is on all the major podcast outlets. And I offer, you know, dream sessions, uh, dream journeys, which are a series of sessions, as well as online dream decoding courses that you can take to learn my method and start integrating it into your own life and habits. Amazing. That's incredible work that you do. And I hope everyone reaches out and explores a little bit more with you on tapping into a dream to make uh, their life a little more fulfilling. Thank you so much for being a guest on Create Magic at Work. And thank you for sending some magic to everyone today. Thank you for having me, Amy. It was my pleasure. Hey everyone, Amy here. I am so excited to share this news with you. If you've been a longtime listener of the podcast, or even if you're new, you probably know that I weave spiritual intelligence through all of the episodes of Create Magic at Work. And we often talk about where you are at with making wise and compassionate decisions, what it looks like to be a wise and effective change agent. How do I put my ego aside and operate from my higher self? And if you've ever been curious as to what level you're sitting at in your life in those skills, I have some great news for you. I have loaded the SQ21 assessment on the Create Magic at Work website. This is something that only my private clients have access to in a coaching partnership with me. However, I have decided to give everyone access to the SQ21 assessment at a generous price, a small fee. You can take the assessment at createmagicatwork.net forward slash shop, and you will get a printout that you can take with you the rest of your life as to where you're sitting, what level you're sitting at, and the 21 skills of spiritual intelligence. This is an amazing opportunity. I encourage you to take advantage of it. Again, if you've ever been listening to all of the past episodes, like, hmm, I wonder where I sit at making wise and compassionate decisions, or I wonder where I sit at being able to access my higher self, explore that curiosity and go to the website and take the assessment. I will also have that link dropped in the show notes so it's easily accessible to you here after the episode. And again, if you have any questions or if you just want to have a chat with me, I'm always available for a complimentary 30-minute coffee chat so you can explore that as well. But get over to the website, take that assessment, and give yourself the gift of something that you can take with you for the rest of your life. Sending magic to you. I want to thank each and every one of you for coming back every week to listen to a new episode of Create Magic at Work and really helping to support and advocate for healthy leaders, workplaces, and lives for all of us. If you want any information on how to connect with me, click on the link in the show notes. You'll get access to all of the social media links for Create Magic at Work. Stay following along for more amazing episodes where we help you improve productivity and profitability in the workplace and decrease stress. Sending magic to everyone and see you next time.